with Orioles Executive Vice President Dan Duquette at the winter meetings. And, Dan, you told reporters a minute ago a lot of talks today. You met with free agents. Trade talks continued. Did Do you feel things? some things got advanced? And did the, are the Orioles close on anything? We've made some good progress on some free agent players that we've been talking to. And hopefully we'll be able to bring some of those deals to closure and add the players to our ball club. I don't know that we're going to be able to do it while we're here, but hopefully we'll be able to do some by the end of the week and some next week. Dan, you mentioned to the Baltimore reporters, uh, your, in your words, the Orioles made an aggressive offer to Chris Davis. And I know you're probably not in a position to get too much more specific than that, but can you shed any light on, on what you've done with Chris and Scott Boris? It hasn't been any secret that we've been trying to come to an agreement uh, with Chris Davis. I mean, we've been working on that for a long time. And, you know, <laughs> we just haven't gotten there yet. And, you know, at some point, uh, you know, we're going to get to a limit and we're going to have to find out if Chris is going to be with us. And if not, then we're going to have to make some alternative plans and staff the team. But I can tell you this, we're going to have a good ball club again next year. And we're going to be able to add some left-handed hitters to our lineup to balance our lineup and have an effective team. You know, the, this, the issue here is really, you know, how much – can, how much of your resources can you put toward one player when you know that all these other things are required to have a good and entertaining team that's affordable to the fans, right? You need the fans, of course, to come out and support you, and we want to keep it as affordable family entertainment, and we want to have good defense, uh, which our uh, manager stresses all the time. We need a good pitching staff, a strong bullpen, uh, set-up hitters, and power hitters. So. It's not just uh, one player that makes the ball club. Uh, it's it's a lot of good players, and we're going to have a lot of good players on our club this coming season. Well, that leads to a very good question. If Chris Davis accepts that aggressive offer and is happy to be back with the Baltimore Orioles, can you do those other things with what resources remain? Well, keep in mind we got a really strong core to this ball club, okay? And when Matt Wieters made the choice to come back, he gave us a real solid catcher to go along with Caleb Joseph. So that's one of the more dynamic catching combinations in the league. We've got J.J. Hardy, who we hope can rehabilitate where he can hit some home runs again. We've got John Scope up the middle. Got excellent power, took a big step forward last year. we still got Adam Jones, Gold Glover, perennial all-star in center field. So that's the core of our team. We're returning all the pitchers but one. we got a strong bullpen with an excellent closer. We're working hard to re-sign Darren O'Day. And we haven't even talked about Manny Machado yet, one of the most talented players in the league. So we're going to have a good ball club. We're going to staff it well. And we're going to be able to add some players here over the next couple of weeks that should help the ball club uh, remain very competitive and entertaining. That flexibility, if Davis says no, it seems that there's more, obviously there's more flexibility. Can you do more with an answer of no? Well, the, you know, the, the thing to keep in mind is that the way the uh, system is structured, if players leave your ball club, you do get back draft picks. And then in this case, we would have additional money to reinvest in the team and recruit other players to help our team. So there's, a, there's other things that you can do. Um, obviously, we have prioritized what we want to do, and we've made it very clear what our intention is, and we'll see if that works. Have the Orioles put a deadline on the Chris Davis, Boris Camp to make a decision? Well, I, I think the Orioles have um, – we have our own timeline for decisions that we have to make to feel a competitive team. And the ownership understands what has to be done, when it has to be done, and uh, the framework to put together a strong competitive team, and we're going to continue to to do that. Dan, last thing. Um, the Orioles have the 14th pick in the June draft – and would have to relinquish that pick if you sign a free agent who turned down a qualifying offer. How do you weigh that? Would would you do that under the right circumstances? Give up that pick? Well, you know, the 14th pick I think is a, a really good, solid pick to have in the draft. You're you're at the area where where you can figure out you and you got a chance to have a good player to help your team, not just for one year but for several years. And given that pick and how the attractive are the players that are in that area, you'd have to think long and hard about 
relinquishing that pick. There's protected picks from 10 up, okay? If you, if you finish in the bottom 10, you're protected, okay? You get your top pick. You can sign a pick. You, you can sign a free agent player, and then you get a pick. You give up a pick down below. Right, but if right. you're, you're 14, you're right at that area where you got to give strong consideration towards keeping that pick rather than signing a compensation free agent. But there's other free agents out there that are very attractive that the compensation is not attached to where you wouldn't have to sacrifice a draft pick. And we're, we're taking a look at some of those options. A lot going on, and you're nice to update us again today. Thanks, Dan. We'll uh, see you tomorrow after the Rule 5 draft. All right. Look forward to talking about the Rule 5, and hopefully we'll have some players to add to the organization to talk about. Sounds good. Dan Duquette with us in Nashville on MassinSports.com.